Hey everybody, it's good old Terry here, coming at you from Rebel Rooster Studios, which is known to most as just my garage. Got a box in the mail today with some Japanese letters on it, so you know it's got something good in here. And uh, by the looks of this red hair, it's been handled by a red-headed woman, or a damn hippie. Anyway, what do you say we get the knife, cut it open, and see what's in here? Well... No sooner than I had shown you my videos, my video about uh, the metallic finish I was able to get by using uh, Mr. Color GX2 as a uh, primer and uh, rubbing in the Mr. Metal Color aluminum over it and scrubbing it, I shouldn't say scrubbing it, buffing it good and hard to get a nice metallic finish like on that P47. I was uh, YouTubing around and um, you know how it is you're watching a video on one thing and then those sidebar videos show up and I saw another metal product which um, caught my eye and um, being a natural metal finish um, nut for lack of a better word I saw this one particular product that I just had to get and so it arrived today and we're gonna open it up and give it a try and um, what we have here is the very very difficult to get your hands on Mr. Hobby Mr. Super Metallic SM08 plate silver next comes in this neat bottle now you can tell look how thin this is I mean you're not gonna thin this you can see it to the uh, to the naked eye those pigments look pretty big to me but um, if the video holds true this is going to be some really really good stuff regardless of what it looks like in the bottle so what I did was I took a wing section for a zero I'm working on and um, I it's a Hasegawa 148 A6M 5C zero and I polished it up and uh, you know my usual method of getting um, the flits and then the Mr. Uh, the Tamiya I'm sorry the Tamiya polishing compound black label finish grade um, this Hasegawa plastic by itself on the back side you can see it, it's it's already pretty good and shiny you can see the lights trying to uh, reflect here but Hasegawa does a pretty good job of prepping their plastic which makes the, the polishing even easier so instead of going through my two-step process with the flits and the uh, Tamiya polishing compound I just got this Magyar's ultimate compound it's for cars and um, I polished it up with that and you can see nice reflective uh, surface ready to go and it didn't take long at all so let's spray both sides of this and see how it turns out so let's get that nut a crack all right guys let's get to work here we're gonna stir it up um the word on the street is to stir it not shake it so that's what i'm gonna go with and uh i'm gonna be shooting it through an iwata hpcs at 9 psi Let's see how that works now I'm gonna be doing this uh, don't I'm gonna be doing this kind of without the extractor fan and without the uh, the mask on don't my wife's gonna be pissed about that because I'm not only am I not using the, the extractor but I'm not wearing my mask either but you married guys know the deal. Every once in a while, you got to do something stupid, and if it makes them mad, you know they still love you, right? So, anyway, start shooting the gray side first. The bare side that's not primed, just plain old bare metal. Or bare plastic, I'm sorry. And you know what? like it there's one thing I don't like about it but so far overall I do like it now let's try it on the uh, on the prime side I 
light overlapping coats here and you know it's always going to take a little more over black than it would over bare plastic and wow holy smokes tell you what fellas i am liking this so far really well and something i do you don't have to do this i just change directions it gives me better coverage and whether or not it's true, some say that the flakes end up different directions. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but could be crazy enough to be true. So you saw I gave it, what, four or five extremely light coats. Let me do the same for the other side so it's justice. And I'll hit it from the back. All right. All right, let's take a look at it and give you the uh, the verdict here. All right. Okay. So here's the uh, here's the deal so far, everybody. You can see it's got, depending on whether you've primed it black or not, a starkly different look. Um, whether it's primed or over the bare plastic, um, it looks pretty good either way. But what I don't like about the bare plastic is, unless you're um, unless your kit doesn't have those little imperfections in the plastic like you see this arced line now we see these all the times so we know it's not any defect in the in the plastic it doesn't stick up and when you paint it with actual paint you're never going to know it's there okay you prime over it you're never going to know it's there but anything going over something this ultra fine going over bare plastic you can see it but i mean you can also see look how nice this pencil looks and when i bring it up here you can see it is very nicely reflective not as reflective as the um, the Mr. Metal color aluminum was when we used it. But remember, this is a buffing metal. We went through several coats and buffed in between and got our hands dirty. And uh, durability was an issue with it. This is far more durable. I mean, even on the bare plastic, I'm, I'm rubbing this really pretty good with a bounty paper towel, which has these notoriously big bumps and pattern designs in them so it's a scratcher um, and it's not doing anything to hurt it so yeah it's a lot more durable now on the prime side with the GX2 gloss black you, you know you got that problem with it being dark and from certain angles it almost looks black um, but when you bring it up you can see this thing has really good reflectivity um, I can see, like before, all around this garage, and I can see everything in it. And um, so it's good for that. Um, but you've got that issue with it from certain angles. It just looks too dark, if you see what I mean. Now, I haven't put a lot of coats on it. Maybe it gets better as I put more on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this off and um, I'm going to leave this side alone and just add coats to it. This side I'm going to strip off and I'm going to try putting some uh, uh, medium, middle of the road dark gray gloss and see if that finds that sweet spot between super reflective but not looking too dark. Okay, so I went ahead and tried spraying the uh, the left side of the wing with additional coats and as most of you probably expected while it did tone down the dark appearance of it from certain angles it ended up just looking like silver paint and um, didn't work out so what I did was I stripped it all off and I took some decanted Tamiya AS12 out of the rattle can. It's their bare metal silver. If you would like to know the easy way and not messy way to decant your paint so you can shoot it through an airbrush like I did with this AS12, I have a video on that. It's short, sweet, and uh, will help you out a lot with decanting paints. <coughs> So on this side, the left side of the wing, I went ahead and did that with the uh, AS12. It's got a nice coat there, nice color. And on this right side, 
I mixed, um, oh, and by the way, I, I thinned this out with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Um, but anyway, getting back to the right side of the wing, I took some Mr. Color C37. It's, uh, I think that says RLM75 uh, Gray Violet, or you might see it on other um, labels called Grau Violet. Uh, it's just a middle of the road dark that's pretty close. If you see I flip it over, it's a pretty close mimic. A little darker than the base plastic, but not closer to the black side than the gray side. And I mixed that 40% um, that to 60% of some clear gloss. And my preferred clear gloss is All Clad's Aqua Gloss, but being water-based, you sure don't want to try to mix it with lacquer. Um, so I took Tamiya Lacquer Paint LP9, and that's their clear gloss. And I mixed those two together with some Mr. Leveling Thinner, and I shot that at about, oh, 12-ish 12, 12 PSI, and it's got a nice look on the left, on the right side. Now, something you're going to see as I do this experiment, you're going to see some Flurm in here. It's, uh, it tells Armpit, Arizona, so there's a lot of dust in the air to begin with, but uh, my neighbor's got some work being done on his roof and I've got some work being done on my roof so there's just inescapable dust out here so um, if you see any of that in there I'm um, sorry about that I'm trying to give you the best look at it that I can so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the uh, the uh, paint we're gonna take it the uh, plate silver next and we're gonna spray both sides and see how it comes out with these as bases So that brings us to here. I really didn't like either of those previous um, wings in that last test. Um, total failure, in my opinion. So take it as fact. So what I did was um, the right wing. I took some, took a little bit of alcohol, and I lightly cleared it off. So now it's kind of where the uh, the gray is about halfway opaque over when you can see different angles. Certain parts of it go through and some don't. But there's just enough left of it where it's still reflective but not so subduing. Left side, I took some uh, Mr. Color C C101 Smoke Gray. You can see it's a gloss. And it's a nice compromise. It um, lets the bare plastic color shine through, but really thick and reflective, which is kind of what I liked about that GX2. This side's kind of thin. Like I said, it's got just a trace. If you look right, you can see just a trace of the old metal in there. But for the most part, it's really rubbed in and mixed in with that little trace of the gray that's left. Um, and the way I got that wasn't really stripping it as such is I took the Magyars to it again okay and I rubbed it in small circles with a q-tip then I cut me a piece of paper towel and the paper towel I'm using again I'm not using bounty for this part for this part you can almost see through this stuff this is super cheap so you can see my hand through there super cheap um, for those of you out west Winco I don't know if you got an equivalent of that type of store out out east, but it's it's a cheap warehouse grocery store, and they have like their knockoff brand of paper towels. These are the cheapest things in the world you could practically. I mean, let me see. 
you can breathe through these things. That's how thin they are. So the uh, the fibers aren't very rough. The texture isn't going to scratch anything up like the bounties or the higher end paper towels would. As a second option, you can get some of these shop these uh, blue auto shop towels. They're pretty soft and they shouldn't do too much damage to you. Um, so I took the Magyars to it and that took just enough of them out and rubbed them in together to where I got a nice finish there and just a nice tone to start it with. And um, on the other side, this, the uh, smoke, I thinned that with Mr. Leveling Thinner, put it on nice and thick so it's nice and reflective. We're just going to wait for it to dry and then we're going to hit the, uh, the wings with the plate silver next once again. All right, turn your sound down. I'm fixing to turn the fan on. It's going to be loud. Now this time I'm going to shoot at about 18 PSI and we're going to see how that works out with it this time. So I'm not thinning it, I'm shooting it straight from the bottle at 18 PSI. Let that dry and see how it looks. All right. Mm, I don't really. Yeah, I'm not sold on it, guys. Um, the right side came back pretty decent. It reflects fair. Um, I'd say this looks good if you want something like, a, say, a P47 that's been in theater for a while. It's it's not ultra shiny, but it is a little shiny. I mean, my hand looks great there, but, you know, when I move it away here, you can see it kind of fades kind of quick. I'm only about five inches away. The side with the smoke on it, um, a little better. I mean, it reflects farther out. I mean, it's reflecting the, the, uh, the bottle over here, which is about 18 inches away. It's reflecting the... Uh, my can, my tomato can over here. Where is that? Um, it's reflecting my tomato can wherever we're trying to find. There we are. It's about a 25 inches away, but it won't get all the way out here to me. Um, won't get the roof. Won't get anything else. So um, a hair better than the right because of the slightly darker starting point, but not quite to where it impresses me and if or if it doesn't impress me it's not going to impress anybody else so what I'm going to try this time now is I'm going to go back to GX2 I'm going to strip these down I'm going to have to polish it again because it's been taking a lot of abuse but I'm going to strip them all down repolish them and I'm going to take the uh, the smoke again and I'm going to add a couple drops of GX2 to make it a little darker and throw that over here on the left side and the right side, oh, I don't know, I'll figure out something else, and I'll let you know what that is when we come back. Okay, everybody, we are back again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, Mr. Color Smoke Gray. That's a C101. Some of you are to me a paint folks, so what you'll probably do is get their um, their smoke, which is, a, if I remember right, something like X, X19 or something like that. Anyway, I'm going to stir this up really good. And I've got a cup with a little measure of Mr. Leveling Thinner in there. And uh, I'm going to start putting this paint in there. I just do it drop by drop. Probably about oh, five or six drops in here. Mix it up a little bit to help me clean this uh, stirring stick out. All right. Cap that up. Now we're going to get the uh, GX2 right here. I'd say I got about 
six drops of the smoke in that cup. My thinning ratio is typically 60-40 to 65-35 heavy on the thinner side. I'm just going to stick uh, three drops. One, two, three in here of GX2. And I'm going to stir this up really good and that'll give me some black but I don't think it's gonna be so darn heavy that it's gonna darken the aloo the uh, metal paint when we put it on um, and I'll take a second look at that mixture off camera before I spray to make sure it still does have a transparent quality to it but still darker than just the smoke so it's leaning more towards transparent dark than black and then, what I'm going to do on the other side, um, I've seen somebody else do this, and for the life of me, I can't remember who it was, or I'd give him credit, but he said to try out a blue under your metals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, Tamiya X23 Clear Blue, all right, and I'm going to put that in the cup. And while we're talking about transparents, a lot of companies make transparent paints, but in my opinion, the Tamiya acrylics, they're my favorite clears. I like those the best. So let's take about six drops in here. That's about two, three, four, five, six. There we are. And what we'll do is, well, it's gonna tip over on me, so let me just take that away for a second. Cap this, this up, because uh, particularly out here in the desert, the air is so dry and the temperatures are usually pretty warm. Those uh, Tamiya acrylics will kind of get a film over the top of them when they start drying pretty quickly. Okay. There that is. I'll wipe this thing off here. And because I am using Mr. Leveling Thinner, that is a lacquer thinner, that will in essence turn this acrylic Tamiya paint into a lacquer so I can mix it with lacquer paints in this case Tamiya LP6 pure blue so if you are going to be mixing acrylic with lacquer paint make sure you're using a good lacquer thinner or you're going to be disappointed and I'll put just two drops of this in here one, two, and let's mix this up. It's a little lighter than I'd like to see, but we'll give it a chance. It's a little thick too, so what I'll probably do is thin it up again, and I'll throw a little more of the clear blue in there because it's a darker shade than this is. So remember, I want it to be more dark, and you know, I got a feeling that's actually going to look pretty good, but you know. Today about to be proven right or wrong here. We're gonna find out. So when we finish mixing these, we'll get the spray. Okay, so we're back here with the uh, wing sprayed. You know, for starters, before I forget, I can't tell you enough how important it is. Let me zoom out of here to make sure that you're starting with good shiny plastic. You can, no matter what you put on top of it, if your plastic's dull, it just ain't gonna look good. I mean, you look at, you see how that light shines. Look at my fingers. You can practically see the fingerprints on those things. See, that's the key to good metal is good plastic prep. Very important. So what I did is I took that mixture of the uh, smoke gray and the black, and I sprayed it pretty heavy. I mean, look at it, it's nice and reflective. That should look good. It's a little darker than um, the gray I was using, but definitely lighter than the black. And um, you can see some uneven spots, which actually I kind of like those. It gives them the metal interest instead of just looking like it's all the same one piece put on there. It makes it behave differently as you move it. And on the right side, I took that blue mix and I sprayed that over here. And on the far right side, I had a little bit of the black left or the, the smoke in the black left over. So I just thought, you know what? Let's get a little saucy here and throw it over the blue and make that darker and see how that turns out for us. So I'm going to spray the uh, 
going to spray the uh, metallic a little differently too here. I'm going to uh, throw just a hair of Mr. Rapid Thinner in there. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is this stuff here. It's kind of like Mr. Leveling Thinner, but it's Mr. Rapid Thinner. It dries quicker. And I want it to dry a little quicker because I don't want all those... I don't want all of the um, pigments to be falling in at the same time and settling on each other. Let's take these toothpicks here as examples. Let's say these are the pigments here. When they dry really quick on their way down, you can see how they're kind of every which way, so the reflection is going to be different all over the place. But if you put, if they dry slow, they're going to settle on top of each other. And then you just got this. And it's going to look kind of boring. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to put a, you know, again, I live in the desert out here, so don't take much to get paint to dry. So I'm going to put just a touch of Mr. Rapid Thinner to make that stuff dry quicker. And I'm going to shoot it at a higher pressure. I'm going to shoot that about 18 PSI and see how that works out. Well, how did it go? Let's take a look. There it is finished. The regular blue, as you can see, just, uh-uh, that's a negative rafter, man. Now, the one where I put the black over the blue and got it darker, not bad. There's problem is you can still see some blue through there, but I imagine if you made that dark enough, a dark enough blue like a, uh, like a midnight blue or glossy blue, you might, you know, the dark, dark blues, it might work out okay. Now for interest, I just kept hitting the side over and over to cover up the color. And as you can see, it just turns into silver paint. So blue doesn't, I mean, it's got good reflectivity, but it just, it, it looks blue. You know what I mean? Um, now, where can this work for you? Uh, for exhausts, this might be very handy for you if you're looking for a stained exhaust. Um, but anyway, getting the other side with the smoke gray, you can see it looks much better. It's got a bunch of crap on there because it's dusty out here, but um, looks a lot better than the black did. Um, it, see what I mean? It doesn't give you that black look like, like, like it did before. Um, it's still a little darker, personally, than I like it, but it's not as dark as black. If you go any lighter, though, the problem is it just doesn't get it. Now, it's got good reflectivity. Um, it's pretty good up close, but as you get farther away, you can see it fades pretty quick. We're talking about... 8 inches here, you can still see my hand on the pencil vaguely, but I mean, it loses its sharpness pretty quick. And by the time I backed off to 18 inches, it's pretty much just barely visible. Uh, whereas you do the side-by-side -side with my old P47, where I did the, uh, the aluminum buffing, up close, it's pretty similar reflectivity. If you look around the room, you can see things that the same objects are reflecting. It's just that if I bring this up way close and reflect over here, um, it looks okay. You can reflect it. You can see the reflection pretty good. When I bring the P47 over here, I mean, it's a lot sharper of a reflection. And you can see I can go a lot farther out. I mean, look at it. It's reflecting everything beautifully as far as I can take it. See? I mean, look at all the way. It's even getting outside there. I mean, there's just no stopping it. Um, so... Speaking of the P47, I've noticed that after drying for days and days and days, it is much more durable than it was the first couple days of it. I'm still not quite ready to go doing any masking over it, but it is definitely stronger. You can handle it and not have to worry about that. But the um, it just looks better than the silver plate does. So... This is by no means bad. I mean, look at it. It's, it's reflecting pretty good and far. I mean, I'm talking, you got a couple of good feet here on it, and it's reflecting good, which is satisfactory. Better than all clad, but not as good as the buffable aluminum. Now, my last step I'm going to do is, I'm going to do my favorite thing to do with the metals, and that's to rub them with the uh, pigments. My very favorite is uh, 123 Dark Steel off of uh, Vallejo. And for those with lighter tastes, you might try the uh, gunmetal from MIG. Um, the only thing with the gunmetal is a little lighter. I like the depth that you get from the darker metal with the 
Alejo. So I'm going to rub these and I'll take a look and see if that made any difference at all and get back to you shortly. Okay, let's take a look at the wing here. I've dropped the pigments on it. As you can see, I took the Q-tip and then I just tapped the Q-tip to get them on there. You can see it's in a powder. Now, to keep yourself from getting swirl marks and scratches, I do is I just kind of spread it around gently. And then I gradually increase my pressure on the rubbing. And same thing on the other side, just very lightly touch it to spread it around. And then gradually increase a little bit more pressure to get it all spread around evenly. Now I'm going to have to go off camera for a little bit here because it takes two hands to rub it well. And we'll take a look at it as soon as it's done. Well, let's take a look. How did the pigments do? Well, on the blue side, you can see it really got rid of a lot of that blue color here. It's still there, but it did get rid of a lot of it and brought some more shine to it. On the dark blue side, it really helped quite a bit. You can see a lot more reflectivity and hardly any blue is showing through there anymore. Now, the other side with the mix of the smoke and the black, it really came to life. Now, look at this reflectivity level. That is really different from what we had before see that looks really good i like that it's a tad darker than the p47 as you can see but um that might be what you're looking for it certainly does look good and look at it reflects all the way out here now for everything really brought it to life that pigment rub something so innocuous and something that you would never think to do and I did actually discovered that accidentally one day by getting that rubbed on my fingers um, but look at what a difference that made from the previous shot so I'll give you a little debrief here and we will call it a night so uh, what's the verdict well before I tell you I'll just tell you how I bumped into this stuff um, I told you I was YouTubing around and I saw a video with it. The uh, the thing with the video is it was um, it was a test with spoons, which I really don't like spoons. They make everything look better than it is. Uh, testing paint on a spoon is like being Michael Jordan's teammate. You know, Michael Jordan's gonna make everybody on the team look great because they're always gonna win. Just like the spoon's gonna make every paint look better than it is. That curved surface of the spoon, just it just it's broad spectrum draws in all kinds of light. It just throws everything right back at you and makes everything look brilliant. Um, it, I mean, if you look at a model, I mean, a model is not a spoon. There is just no part of this model that's, that's a representative of a spoon. So your paint's not going to look like it does on a spoon. I'd much rather, pe uh, uh, much rather people put it on a model when they test things. Uh, some get the flat sheet styrene. I'm not crazy about that either because... That sheet styrene isn't the same uh, plastic surface that your model is. So anyway, that's just my two cents. So take it as fact. But anyway, um, so it was fourth and goal towards the end of the video, as you saw. It was looking good, but it wasn't looking great. It looked like it was going to lose out to the Mr. Metal Color um, aluminum that you buff. The stuff we used on the uh, P47 in the other video. Then I gave it the pigment rub. And man, it came to life. I mean, it just, it, I don't know how to say it. It just came to life. I've got the lights off. You can see my two lights up here. There's one, there's the other. I'll get them out of your field of view. Um, but I have those off. So this is just average garage lighting you're going to see. And you can see, I mean, look at this thing is reflecting everything, everywhere that you can imagine. I mean... Look, even way back over here at my, uh, sorry, at my paint cabinet, you can practically read the labels on that thing. Look at the clarity in this. Even the P47 with the uh, buffed aluminum, I mean, it shows it, and it looks good, but it ain't as crystal clear as you're getting with this one. I mean, if I come up here and I try to get a, and I get it up here and I reflect it back at me, the phone look you can actually see the wing on the phone you can see me back there behind it 
it's just amazing the clarity that this has. It goes up everywhere, as far back as you take it, anywhere you want to look at anything. I mean, you can use this to look around corners for things. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like in World War I, you can use this to look over the trench. Look at this. I mean, I don't want to seem like I'm blowing my wad over this, but man, this is really exciting to me find a metal paint that's this good. Um, the blues just, I mean, once we pigment rubbed it, the darker side got better, lost its blue color. The other side kept it. But even at that, it's a little hazy. This mix of the the smoke and the GX2 is really good. So the takeaway, it's awesome stuff. Um, it's not as bright silver the color you know the, the toning of the metal is a little darker i mean it looks dark here in the camera but it's only because it's so darn reflective but i mean it's it's not as bright silvery as the uh the aluminum is but it certainly is not dark like it was over the gloss black earlier in the video i i love this this is for you mustang guys this is just perfect I might even make my P47s, I don't know, but um, the things you're going to want to remember are big deal, big, 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 big deal, prep your plastic. If your plastic isn't shiny, nothing you put on top of that is going to save it. You've got to have good plastic preparation. Um, for the base, use what you want, but I recommend getting that um, mix of a super good gloss black like GX2, uh, Tamiya X1 might do you right too, and mix it with um, a smoke. You can use Tamiya X19 with it or uh, Mr. Colors uh, C101 smoke gray, but uh, about 60, 65% thinner to 40, 35% paint. And then the ratio between these two, I go heavy on the clear and just a little bit of the black. Probably about six drops, two drops, kind of around there. You know, experiment suits you like. Um, the key is you want that to be pretty much transparent, dark but transparent. That's what really saved the day with it over just using a regular gloss black. Uh, I really do believe that using Mr. Rapid Thinner makes a big difference. I sprayed about not quite a foot away. I, I gave it more distance when I sprayed. And between that and the Mr. Rapid Thinner, it seemed to dry quicker and the higher pressure seemed to help it as well. So your, pr your plastic prep, the good base color you're going to use, um, and uh, Mr. Rapid Thinner with a uh, little distance and a higher pressure, I shot it about 18. And again, I shot that out of an Iwata HPCS. Um, I find the metallics go better out of the larger needles, 3.5 and larger. Um, I think if you got a, one of those 1.8s or 0.2s, you might have a little trouble getting it to spit the pigments out. Um, another thing is uh, I gave it a very light buffing after it dried. I don't know if it made a difference or not, honestly. Um, and then the pigment rub. Big deal. Um, I used the Vallejo Pigments 73.123 Dark Iron. Uh, you might get better luck with, uh, if you're looking for lighter stuff, with uh, MIGS 3009 Gunmetal. It's a lighter shade than the Dark Iron, but, uh, or Dark Steel rather, I'm sorry, Dark Steel. Uh, the Gunmetal is lighter than Dark Steel, but I find that the Vallejo Pigments tend to stick and grab a little bit better than the, um, the MIG does. Uh, the, another thing is don't don't uh, don't coat over it. Um, even aqua gloss is gonna. I mean, that, and that's my favorite gloss. Even that's gonna rob you of a luster. I mean, especially one as fine as this. You're you're gonna lose a lot of luster if you put anything over it. Just looking around on this thing, I still can't get over it. But anyway, um, so those are the big things. If you're gonna do colors. Um, at this point, until I can experiment further, I'd probably just do the colors first and then cover those and do your metal with this. Um, I mean, it's it's certainly durable. I mean, it's the same day and it's already, I'm rubbing this pretty good and it's not doing anything to it. 
I'll try masking it maybe tomorrow or the day after and then maybe doing some uh, decal stuff later on. But uh, it's certainly going to be more durable than the stuff I put on this P47, which actually did get tougher about four or five days after I put it on there. It got a little tougher. But um, being that this is an SM series paint, it's going to be more durable than the, uh, than the uh, Mr. Metal color was. So, the final verdict. Excellent paint by all means. If you can get it, then get it. It's Mr. Color, Super Metallic, SM08, Plate Silver next. And that brings us to the bad news, and that is that it is really hard to get. You're, you ain't going to get in the U.S., at least not now. I, I looked everywhere. No one's got it. Um, they've got it on their websites, but it ain't in stock. You might have luck going up yonder to the Great White North. The Canadians might have it. Make sure they ship to the U.S. first. I found out uh, the hard way that one of them doesn't. Um, so make sure they ship to the U.S. Just because it has a U.S. price converter on it doesn't mean they're going to ship it to you here. But uh, they're usually pretty good about getting the, uh, the overseas stuff up there. Um, or you might have to go to Taiwan or somewhere else to get it. But... When I got it, I searched for it a good 45 minutes. I mean, I was everywhere that the internet has that sells model paints. I went to spray gunners. I went to everywhere. No one had it in stock um, until I finally bumped into uh, this Gundam store up in Canada. Up in Canada. <laughs> Canada. Um, anyway, and they had 12 bottles. I went to bed the next morning. Thought you know, slept on it because it ain't cheap. Uh, woke up the next morning and they had four. So um, I pulled the trigger and got one. Um, before it was gone for good, you know, worst comes to worst, you're out eight bucks, nine bucks. Best comes to best, you're you're acting like Tom Cruise on the couch on a talk show because you're so excited about the way this stuff turned out. I mean, this is just incredible. Um, so, super good stuff. Give it a try. Uh, why don't you put in the comments what's more important to you, durability or the shine? Do you like the uh, the little bit darker look? Do you like the lighter look? Um, do you use other base colors besides uh, shades of black? Do you use blues, reds, oranges? Put them down there. Let's hear from you. Thanks for tuning in. Sure do appreciate you coming out here and uh, watching the video again. And we'll see you next time.